All right, so today on Dream of the Swarm is a very interesting day. My dad passed away three and a half years ago, and he was an incredible man. My dad made an impact on people's lives, and as simple as he was, dad was not a successful businessman. By any stretch of imagination, he ran a business out of the house. He had a butcher shop, and he was a trapper and a hunter and a fisherman, and that's how he provided for food for our family growing up. We didn't have a lot of money. He always made, managed to make an impact on other people's lives, and that was something that I've always admired about him. As I've gone through my life, it just happened again yesterday. I will call random people for random things. They hear I'm from the town of Duanesburg, New York, and they'll say to me, do you know Cappy Schwarm? My dad's name was Howard, but they called him Cappy. And I'm always very proud when I say, yeah, that's my dad. He then went to work part-time at a school. He made such an impact on people's lives. He would sit down and talk with them. He always passed out candy to them. He would do, he would do all the things that would make you feel special. When a new teacher would come to school, he'd make them feel welcome. People just love my dad. We didn't know how much they loved him until my dad passed. This small little town that has 2,000 people in the town, dad didn't have a cell phone, dad didn't have an email address, dad was deaf the last, the last 20 years of his life, so he didn't have uh, the, the best communication skills. Over 850 people, 850 people showed up to his funeral, and it was in November, so it was cold, and people called us after and said, Glenn, we waited outside, we just couldn't wait any longer, it was just too cold, but we know that we tried to get in. People kept coming and coming and coming because he made such an impact in their lives. So today on our episode, I'm actually going up to the school. It's three and a half years later, and the music teacher from the school, who's good friends with my mom, has put together a ceremony. I guess they've made a bench for my dad, and it says, Howard Cappy Schwarm, come sit with me. Because <laughs> that's what dad did, right? He'd bring you in and he'd make you feel comfortable. So they have this bench you're gonna to dedicate today. So if I wouldn't get emotional today, because it's been three and a half years, but it sort of brings up some feelings. So we're gonna go up there today. Hello. Hello. We're heading up there as a crew and uh, to watch them pay honor to my dad. Amber had a real close relationship with my dad too. He was the best. Like he was, he's, he's, he was one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. <laughs> the big picture is pretty awesome, but it's it does kind of drag you back through those emotions, and it's kind of yeah. an emotional roller coaster. But it's great, it just shows the impact that he's made on so many lives and uh, that three and a half years later, they still want the time to put this bench out there and, uh, and give that a moral to him. So, yeah. pretty cool. So, off we go. Next stop, pick up uh, mom and the rest of the family and head up, head up there. So my family's here today. My brother Gary's here, my brother Roger's come down from Rochester. We have other family that's here too and cousins are coming in. So, we're gonna go up there and have a ceremony. We're gonna have a little dinner together. As a family, we're gonna always remember what this this teacher and these teachers have done for my dad by giving him this memorial of a bench under a tree just to remind everybody how he he made life so special and he's somebody that i aspire to be all the time when cappy would come to our church uh, he'd shake my hand first time i fell for it and tears came down my head. The second time I would take my ring off because he, I think he enjoyed looking at the pain. <laughs> May this place be a place where people can stop and connect with each other. Biblically speaking, a tree is a signal of stability and faithfulness. Happy was firm and faithful. He always brought us up. He always had a pleasant word to say. My first night here, I went to him and I asked him, I said, where is the floor cleaner to mop the floor with? And he said, I have no idea, but here's some toilet bowl cleaner, use that. Happy <laughs> really was instrumental in, in, in teaching other children and teaching students today as a custodian. You know, he not only brought these wonderful flowers and trucks, but he had an impact on the students. I'm Chris. Um, I, I was known to Cappy as... <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple of years before Cappy passed away and we were down at my daughter's apartment in um, Esperance and for the Memorial Day Parade. Cappy was very proud to be a veteran. Even though I had a bad day at work, and when he came through that back door there, he always brought me back up. That's the key word with Cappy. He's happy, happy, happy. It just, what a, it just brings everybody up. He would walk around <laughs> at the end of the day, or he'd even come in if he were teaching class. 
and he would pass out these goodies and he would either have cream puffs or he'd have eclairs or mints or chocolate but there was always something he was slipping at and he'd go around and so we made the bags where we want you to take home and think of Kathy and how he would love to share a treat with you. Come on, guys. So, it's been a long day. We just finished uh, with our family dinner after we had the bench presenting ceremony memorial. for my dad and it was amazing and I was I feel a little bad because I was at first I was I was anxious about it today and a little nervous that it might bring back a lot of feelings and it didn't it brought up a lot of other great feelings didn't it yeah you know all the comments that people were making and everything it just really reminded me of how authentic your dad was like he he was like unapologetically himself which yeah. is very much like you yeah. unapologetically yourself yeah sometimes to a fault but but he was. He was like he was like super authentic, and he was the same person in front of his family as he was to everybody else. And like he's probably the only person I know in my life that can say that they live life without regrets. He did. I, I watched all the people talk that you've seen here today, and, and all these people get up and spoke. There are probably what 60, 70 people there. Yeah, something like that. And they three they, years later, all these people still came to pay their respects to him and talk about Dad. I realized that. I get a lot of my characteristics from my dad I didn't even know because he did so many things behind the scenes that I didn't know. He would encourage people to stop and pause in their life and take a minute to enjoy the moment that they're in. He always brought the room up and I thought to myself, it's so funny, that's what I've tried to do my whole life with what I do with my workshops, when I speak, when I coach people, I'm always trying to you know, lift other people up when I'm there. What's funny though is like your dad's not a businessman. No. He's not a businessman at all, yet he still, you still got that example from him. But you've taken it to a different place and, and brought that same kind of enthusiasm with what we do with the workshops and helping people. And I, think, I think that my life's all been all about helping people change their lives, right? And we talk about how we use real estate to help people change their lives. And I, I realized that Dad used just life to help people change their lives. He, he made them realize the things that were right in front of them they could just do every day to make it simple. And like you said, I, I think of it, I want to leave a legacy. And I thought to myself, as people were there today, I thought to myself, when I die, will there be this many people? There were 850 people at his funeral. There could have been over a thousand, it was cold weather. And 70 some people showed up three and a half years later to pay their respects to the man. Will I have that kind of a legacy when I go? He was just one of those people that you met and you never forgot and he just like left this lasting impression on your heart. So I hope as we wrap this episode up today that you know I'm sharing these personal moments with you because I want you to get to know who I am and who Amber is. And for me, that, that's that's the man that raised me. And I spent my whole life, you know, getting coaches and, co and being coached on business and on things in life and using success and how you reach the next goal and all that. But I realized something today. I realized that he was the best coach I could have ever had. Ever had, bar none, he was the best coach ever. I honestly don't think I realized that until today that he was the ultimate coach because he taught me how to be a life coach and how to have a great life. And that's what I try to impart on my staff that works for me. I'm always about balance. I try to impart that on my students. When you're out there building your goals, don't forget about balance. And I never realized that I actually learned it from the greatest coach in the world, the guy I get to call my dad. Thanks for sharing this with us today.